if everything the Mughals did was so bad, knock down the Red Fort. I believe there is some university which has actually classified Urdu as a foreign language. He learnt his craft and slogged at it. And I think I saw film after film of his just to see how bad a film can possibly be. <laughs> <you know? laughs> Sir, I have to say, an absolute honor uh, to speak with you because uh, life works in a strange way, sir. A week ago only, I was speaking to Manoj Bajpai, sir, and he was talking about uh, how much of an influence you were to his acting career. He's sweet to say that. Yeah. Uh, but sir, I was. Uh, I also mentioned that the first time I had uh, my parents had seen you on stage was uh, Mahatma vs Gandhi with uh -huh. you and K K Menon, sir. Right. And the first time I saw you on stage, sir, was at the Rose Bowl for Waiting for Godot. Waiting for Godot. Uh, with a slightly younger Randeep Hooda as well. That's right. He was yeah. lucky. Huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that was when Mason was was. Yes, sir. Head. Yes, sir. Ah. Right. We used to come there often. I love performing to schools and uh, student audiences. And I believe that even if the students are subjected to a play which they don't understand, like Waiting for Godot, but the funny thing is children understand Waiting for Godot perfectly. It's adults who have a problem with it, <laughs> you know. Um, or, or something complex like The Tempest or something like that. It's okay if they don't understand it. At some stage in their lives, they're going to encounter it again and they shouldn't feel lost. Because I saw a lot of such plays when I was a kid in school, in Nanital, St. Joseph's. Many plays which I didn't understand at all. Macbeth, for example, She Stoops to Conquer, uh, The Lesson and all these. But years later, when I, when I uh, you know, had to deal with them again as a literature student in college, I said, yeah, yeah I've seen this play. And we saw a number of plays, particularly by this troupe called Shakespeareana, led by Mr. Kendall. Jennifer Kapoor's father and mother. They were the, and and I know how much of an impact watching those same plays which put us to sleep in the classroom <laughs> had when they were on stage. And I really think that watching Mr. Kendall is when I realized that acting is done by human beings, not by photographic tricks. And I want to become an actor. No, every year or two when you would come, it would be a very distinct memory uh, <laughs> that uh, Sir is visiting with the Motley crew. Uh, sir, I have to ask, um, in your recent interviews, I had heard you say that at this stage of your career, you have to be really creatively motivated to do anything, whether it be a cameo or full-fledged role, and now in this case, a long-form content role. Uh, was it just the prospect of playing Akbar or... Uh, the lens at which he was looking at the complexities of the relationship? The second part of the question is what's the reason? Because this series explores aspects of Akbar's character which are not generally known. He's known as this magnificent creature who tried to create religious unity uh, and all that. And he's, he's also a pretty misunderstood person misunderstood by both uh, by religions, particularly by the Muslims who, who referred to him as an unbeliever because he was very influenced by the Jains, by the Buddhists, by the, 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 the uh, Zoroastrians and all the people he had around him, his Navratans, they were mostly Hindu. His general was Hindu. Um, and he, 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 was, he was genuinely a liberal person who wanted to break down the barriers of uh, that religion creates between us, which was misunderstood and which was not successful. As we can see in today's context, that what he was trying was way ahead of its times. It was, it was, it was a time when people took Hindu and Muslim unity for granted. You know, everybody spoke the same language, everybody ate the same food, wore the same clothes, worshipped different deities, but, but, but that didn't seem to matter at that time. Yet at that time, he spoke of breaking the distinction between religions. Say the lack of nuance that exists now when it comes to the Mughal kingdom and their reign. It's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of ridiculous, you know. They were not despots like Mahmud Ghaznavi or bloody Nadir Shah or Hori who came here to loot. 
They did. And that's a fact. No one denies it. The Mughals stayed here for 500 years and left their imprint on this land. So run them down. Arey bhai, Mughals se pahle kam, from, from the 1206 was the Delhi Sultanate established by Qutubuddin Aibak, who was not a Mughal. His son, his granddaughter was Razia Sultan. Uh, uh, the Qutub Minar was built by the Turks, not by the Mughals. It was built in honor of a, a Sufi saint called Khwaja Qutbuddin Kaki, Bakhtiyar Kaki. Uh, uh, the Taj Mahal was built by the Mughals. The Red Fort was built. Now, even this is being questioned today. When I said this in that inter earlier interview, that if, the, if everything the Mughals did was so bad, knock down the Red Fort, knock down the Taj Mahal, knock down the, the Mughal garden, knock down everything. So, who says Shah Jahan built the Taj Mahal? It was built by Raja Lal Singh Tomar or some name like that. So, I said, okay, then in that case, he must have built the Jama Masjid also. <laughs> because if you carbon date, then they're from the same period. The re-engineering of history is huh, dating it, it, back it, to it, everything. It, taking us back to the Dark Ages. And what about the Ebaks? What about the Tughlaqs? What about the Mamluks? What about the, uh, the, the Lodis? The Khiljis, all these guys were there before the Mughals. Yeah. Nobody talks about them because nobody knows about them. I would assume a young Nasruddin Shah who is acting would assume that it's going to constantly evolve to get even more complex when it comes to human portrayals in commercial cinema. Yeah. But I feel like commercial cinemas digress to make it make the lines even, even uh, more uh, distinct. Even more, yeah, and impossible. Uh, there isn't a chance that commercial cinema will ever mature because its main purpose is to mint money, not to make a statement or to say something of significance, unless it's anti-Muslim, of course, which, which everybody seems to be feeding on these days as the success of certain recent movies testifies. In, in the book 1984 by George Orwell, he created a society that he imagined would exist in 1984. It was written somewhere in the 50s. And in 1984, according to him, there would be every day two minutes of hate. Compulsory for everybody. So you stopped whatever you were doing when the siren went off. And you watched a huge video of an opposition leader who was opposing Big Brother. And he appeared on the screen and all you did was, ah, 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 you bastard, you this, you that, we'll kill you, we'll do that, blah, blah, for two minutes. And then two minutes was over. Back to work. Primetime news TV isn't <laughs> different, right? It's no different. <laughs> it's only thing is now it's become 24 hours. For 24 hours. <laughs> Sir, uh, you know, uh, through several interviews uh, I've seen of you and Ratna ma'am, um, I especially resonate with uh, your growing love over the decades for Urdu. And uh, you speak about uh, playing Ghalib and uh, how Gulzar Saab gave you an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, through the lockdown, you were reading a lot of fairs. And uh, I wanted to understand also from your perspective, the again, the negative rhetoric that goes with the Urdu language. Mm. Uh, there's almost a sense of uh, not wanting to educate oneself of its yeah. uh, origin yeah. and uh, label it as a foreign demonic. language. I believe there is some university which has actually classified Urdu as a foreign language. Now, can you think of anything more absurd than that? I asked my students, I said, can you name another country in the world where Urdu is spoken? Apart from Pakistan, where, where there are hundreds of other languages. In fact, Punjabi is spoken more widely than Urdu is. Then they have Baluchi and they have Dari and they have Saraiki and they have Pashto and they've got all... Uh, Sindhi, of course, is no longer spoken in Pakistan. And they say, uh, what about uh, Iran? I said, okay, come on. Iran speaks Urdu, Iran speaks Persian. Turkey, they don't speak Urdu. I said, no, you know, they don't, and they don't realize that India is the only country where Urdu is spoken. India is the country where Urdu was born, where Urdu flourished because it absorbed elements from all the other languages. And that is how languages grow and are created. It, it is absorbed. an amalgamation, right? Amalgamation, sir? absolutely. Mainly from Hindi. There are 
Turkish words in it, there are Persian words in it, and there are Arabic words in it, and there are Hindi words in it, and the grammar is that of Hindi. Most Marathis don't realize how many Persian words there are in Marathi language. You said, uh, sir, there was an influence of Farsi in uh, a lot of Marathi words, right? Those Farsi words are there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they get surprised. Arsi, Arsa, for example, mirror, that's a Farsi word. Mm. Jakat, Naka, Zakat is a Farsi word. Fakat, which is actually Fakat. Or Mashgat, which is actually Mashakat. So there are many uh, accepted words which are considered to be, uh, which are part of the Marathi language, but which are of Persian origin. Because Persian was spoken by uh, the common people in those days. Even Shivaji spoke Persian. Urdu is a foreign language. And but yet, sir, like, I couldn't help but uh, ask you, sir, regarding the same, because uh, I was uh, uh, listening to Vivan in a recent interview. He was uh, talking about his book. But mm. he was uh, speaking about uh, Nasruddin Shah, the director, mm. and uh, how... Um, uh, I think uh, he spoke about uh, a play that you uh, did called Gadhe Ki Atma Katha mm. and uh, just the ingenuity that you brought uh, as a director. I hear that you directed a short film called MWMW. Could you uh, tell me a little <laughs> about it if you could? Because <laughs> I hear uh, the entire family is associated. Yeah, the, right? not uh, yes, except for Hiba. Okay. Because uh, Ratna plays one of the leading parts and Vivan plays another. And the music was done by Imad, and he sung a song in it as well. So it's a it's it's about it's a love story of two. Uh, what shall I say? Overripe <laughs> <laughs> people heading into old age, both alone, both lonely, who who want to get together. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, and, and the complications that arise. So it's a. Uh, I think it's not the kind of film people expect from me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's a uh, there's uh, nothing angry in it. <laughs> there's nothing passionate in it. It's a it's a light-hearted uh, love story. Mm. No, no, we're looking forward, sir, because <laughs> you're coming back uh, behind the camera after a long time. Oh boy, yes. I yes. never thought I would. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, sir, I also uh, you know one of the most interesting aspects for me uh, when you do talk about influences is. Uh, you absolutely fell in love with seeing Dara Singh and Shami Kapoor, Shami Kapoor on screen. Dara ji didn't have an abandon on screen. Okay. He was terribly self-conscious. Okay. But he was so sweet. You know, uh, you could see that sweetness in him as a, as a person. Even though he tried to put on menacing expressions and never succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I saw film after film of his just to see how bad a film can possibly be, oh, you know. <laughs> But I sat through them all. I don't remember ever walking out of a Dara Singh movie. Uh, and um, it, 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 they transported me. You know, though they were tatty remakes of Morgan the Pirate and Hercules and Samson and, uh, you know, Tarzan the Jungle King and all that kind of stuff. But I just, I, I, they would transport me. And, and Daraji, when I was a child, was an absolute... Legend, mm-hmm. Dara Singh well, had, had become like a, a synonym for strength. You know, tum apne aapko Dara Singh samajhte ho. It was this kind of talk about it, and there was this myth attached to him that he lives in jail, and when he has a wrestling bout, he's taken out of jail and he comes to. But I I met Dara Ji at some point later, and I chatted with him for a long time, and he told me, no, that was another man altogether, <laughs> whose name was also Dara Singh, who had killed. A man and who was a very good wrestler. But it kept the aura alive, I it guess. It kept the aura alive. Mm-hmm. And so when he started appearing in movies, I said, hey, I'm going to see Dara Singh movie. Yeah. And I couldn't have enough of him. So there were always lovely songs in those movies. Lakshmi Kant Pyarilal began course. with those kind of movies. Paras Mani and Dara Singh's Ayatu Fan and films like that. And there were these gorgeous girls like Mumtaz <laughs> and Helen, oh. <laughs> you know. Uh, and Shammi Kapoor, well, uh, I, I don't consider him a great actor, but I just loved his uh, brashness and his dual f- feminine, masculine quality that he had. I think the most attractive men are those who have both qualities mm. or, or rather the, the embryo of both these qualities. Oh, wow. And the way he did his songs... It's unmatched. 
even today. no one no one can do it like him sir lastly uh, i also wanted to ask you um, you know you've had several people uh, through uh, your active work in theater who must have been under your tutelage and who've gone on to do uh, great things i'm sure like who really like has stuck out for you in terms of the younger generation who's probably worked under you who's done well for himself i can't i can't take credit for for any body's uh, uh, well being or success i try to extend a helping hand to young actors no matter how much manoj who i love may talk of the influence i've had on him but the fact is he's successful because he learned his craft and slogged at it and was patient and the same holds true for all the other gentlemen yes. who i named so i i don't really like to uh, to take any credit for that <laughs> i have been able to influence my own sons about acting <laughs> <laughs> So uh I have to ask you uh, uh with the experience you had doing the short film uh does it interest you uh, to of the several formats that do exist now in the current market to do something else as well It is the future the what used to be called the idiot box <laughs> is going to be the future Yeah I think film watching might just become a solitary experience you know like uh, listening to music on your own watching a film on your own I think and it may just it may just uh, help the quality of the movies made because as i've said before in some other interview that you can't watch a blood soaked revenge drama over your dinner table with your children here so this you know the multi or said called the solo theaters where people whistle and dance and throw coins at the screen may be a thing of the past or even if it isn't because people need mindless entertainment that's a fact and plenty of people supplying it but i hope that being able to make risk free subjects you explore without having a distributor sitting on your head and saying cast this star and put in this song and put in a fight here and put in a girl in a bikini over here they are free to make the kind of movies there so you come out with wonderful things like gulmohar uh, or many of these short films that are being made these days so even the documentaries that are being considered they are doing so those. well The Elephant Whisperer. Wow! It is such a beautiful movie, yeah. and the other one, uh, uh, All That Breathes. All That Breathes, yes, sir. It, With Sean Penn. It, Xen, it yeah. is absolutely stunning. I was speechless after I saw it, and I think documentaries are of more importance. Uh, I've just seen one called An Unseen Kashmir, made by a person called Pratik Vasan. Mm -hmm. uh, he sent it to me because he wants a, a testimonial. It's already out on some channel. Absolutely beautiful. without getting polemical about it without getting political about it without trying to show how much you know about it it's just a love letter to kashmir the many avenues sir then uh, there hopefully are. we'll uh, Let's see, see if you. i have the energy to <laughs> but there's always the stage as well where we'll see you anyway there's always the stage thank you so much sir it was a privilege <laughs> okay, sir thank you sir right